Hello friends, today we'll be discussing about another boiler trouble that is boiler corrosion. In the previous video, we, we had discussed about sludges and scale and that was also a boiler trouble. And here we will be discussing about the corrosion of boiler, boiler corrosion. The decay of boiler material by chemical or electrochemical reactions in it with its environment is nothing but known as boiler corrosion. So you can see the effect of boiler corrosion here. This may be due to dissolved oxygen, dissolved carbon dioxide, acid present in the water or the galvanic cell formation. So these are, there are four different reasons for the boiler corrosion. Let us discuss one by one. Now, dissolved oxygen in water in the presence of boiler at high temperature attacks iron. You can see here, you can see the reaction also. Iron will react with water in presence of oxygen to form FeOH twice. And this FeOH twice, that is ferrous hydroxide, will further react with oxygen to form a rust. So if there is presence of oxygen in water, there will be corrosion. Now, for the removal of this oxygen, we may add some reducing agents like sodium sulfide, sodium sulfide or hydrogen. See how it is going to remove it. Sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide can react with oxygen to form sodium sulfate. So oxygen is consumed in this process. So we can say that the oxygen present in the water will be removed if we add sodium sulfide. Similarly, sodium sulfide also can react with oxygen to form sodium sulfate. Here also, we, uh, sodium sulfide is consuming oxygen. Even the hydrogen, that also will react with oxygen to form nitrogen and water. Since nitrogen is harmless, hydrogen is generally the ideal chemical for the removal of the dissolved oxygen. So for the removal of dissolved oxygen, which causes boiler corrosion, we can use any of these type of uh, agents, reducing agents like sodium sulfide, sulfide or hydrogen. This will react with oxygen or else it will consume oxygen present in the water so that there will not be any boiler corrosion because of the presence of oxygen. Next, we can even preheat it. Air begins to expel out at a temperature of about 65 degrees centigrade and it will be almost removed at 100 degrees centigrade. So if you preheat it, then that oxygen can be removed. The third method of removal of oxygen is mechanical deaeration. In this process, water will be sprayed in a perforated plate. Okay, perforated because of which there will be large surface area and you can see here, this is a perforated plate. We are heating it from sides. We he here we have the steam jacket and here we have the vacuum pump so that all the dissolved gases will be removed with, uh, through this. This is the water feed from which water will be sprayed on this uh, perforated plates and the deaerated water, deaerated, it may be oxygen or it may be carbon dioxide, any of the dissolved gases, this can be removed by using this mechanical deaeration process. So deaerated uh, water will be removed from here. Now, at high temperature, low pressure, then uh, if the dissolved oxygen, if there is dissolved oxygen in water, it can be removed with uh, in these conditions like high temperature, low pressure, and we have large surface area. These are the three conditions by which we can remove the dissolved gases. The sol because solubility of the gas is directly proportional to the pressure and inversely proportional to the temperature. Now, the second reason for boiler corrosion is carbon dioxide. Water contains dissolved carbon dioxide, we know. So this carbon dioxide will react with water to give carbonic acid. See, we have carbon dioxide, water to form carbonic acid. This carbon, carbonic acid has a slow corrosive effect on the boiler material because it is acid, so it will have a corrosive effect. So the um, carbon dioxide that is re uh, released in the boiler 
that will be even uh, carried along with steam and carbonic acid will be formed and this carbonic acid will cause a corrosion in the boiler. If the water is used for steam generation containing uh, bicarbonates, like if water is having bicarbonates, decomposition of this bicarbonate also gives carbon dioxide. Again, that carbon dioxide will react with water to form again carbon dioxide, uh, carbonic acid. So magnesium bicarbonate on heating gives magnesium hydroxide and byproduct as carbon dioxide. Even calcium bicarbonate, all bicarbonate generally on decomposition gives carbon dioxide as byproduct and this carbon dioxide will react with water to form carbonic acid causing the uh, causing the corrosion of the material now for the removal of carbon dioxide we can add lime or ammonia because it can react with carbon dioxide to form ammonium carbonate so ammonium hydroxide will react with carbon dioxide to form ammonium carbonate or else we can say that carbon dioxide is consumed in this process even limestone also removes carbon dioxide, but because it introduces hardness, we generally do not prefer that. See, you can see the reaction. Carbon dioxide is reacting with uh, calcium carbonate, that is limestone is reacting with carbon dioxide, and it forms calcium bicarbonate because of this removes carbon dioxide because uh, it is reacting with carbon dioxide to form the bicarbonate, but this bicarbonate is a hardness. So there is introduction of hardness, so we don't prefer this thing. Mechanical deaeration, as explained in case of oxygen, the same process can be used to remove carbon dioxide. Preheating can also remove carbon dioxide. This also I have discussed in case of oxygen. So for carbon dioxide and oxygen, mechanical deaeration and preheating process both can be used for the removal and uh, the reaction acids in water the third reason for the uh, this one uh, boiler corrosion is nothing but acids in the water acids is free mineral acids present in the boiler water that can react with boiler material for example we can say hcl for example this is the boiler material if it if there is hcl present in the water mineral acid is present in water this will react with fe to form fecl2 plus h2 this FeCl2 will react with water because in a boiler there will be water and there are temperature conditions also, high temperature will be available. FeCl2 will react with this water to form Fe, ferrous hydroxide, FeOH twice. And if there is more amount of oxygen, it will form the rust. And even some, so this you can see here, we are using HCl and forming FeCl2. Fe is reacting with HCl to form FeCl2 and further reaction is producing HCl again. So there is again production of HCl which will destroy the uh, iron present uh, in the boiler. Okay, So the material is uh, destroyed in the case of if there is any mineral acid present present. Even the presence of uh, the inorganic salt like magnesium chloride this on hydrolysis also gives HCl. You can see MgCl2, this gets hydrolyzed to form magnesium hydroxide, which is a hardness. Okay, and we get even HCl. This HCl again will attack on iron. Okay, so this also is a problem. So the uh, if there is a little amount of HCl, then also it is a problem because the through the reaction itself, it is again produced. And uh, even the salts like magnesium chloride is also producing HCl. So acids in the water are one of the main causes for the boiler corrosion. Now, for the removal, for the, if there is small amount of acid present, we can add some alkali so that it will be neutralized in the water itself. Alkali may be added to uh, neutralize the acid formed in large quantity pH is maintained at about 10.5 so that acid do not attack the boiler material. All these three can be used. Like in general, we can say that for the if we can neutralize the acid present by using some alkali, then most of the problem is solved. And or else we can see the pH value and it should be always maintained above or like about 10.5 so that 
uh, acidity will not be there because above seven it is alkaline in nature. Now the last reason for the fourth reason for the galvanic corrosion is galvanic cell formation. Okay, the boiler corrosion iron forms galvanic cell with impurities present in the boiler fittings. For example, for example, we can take zinc plate is connected to iron. Zinc is more active. Uh, it is more electropositive than iron. So what happens is zinc will become anode and uh, iron becomes, uh, the zinc gets dissolved and iron will be saved, okay? Because it is more reactive. Anyway, if there is two different, uh, this one, metals are present, then there will be for, uh, formation of galvanic cell. And if there is galvanic cell, galvanic cell means it itself says that there is an anode and there is a cathode. At anode, there will be always oxidation take place. Oxidation is nothing but the corrosion process, okay? Oxidation means there is loss of electron. So more active metal, if, the, if it is connected to more active metals, then we can say that more active metals will lose electrons easily. So the active metal will undergo corrosion and the other one will be saved. So if we want to save metal like iron, as I said here, if we can connect it to zinc, then zinc is more active and zinc will get dissolved and iron can be saved. This is one of the thing, galvanic cell formation itself is used to protect it, okay? And the, if, the, if we are not taking care that, it is connected to some other uh, metals which is more uh, noble or else that we can say that if iron is more reactive, iron that is a boiler material, what I'm saying is the boiler material iron, if it is more uh, reactive or more active uh, than compared with that of the other metal which is, in connect, uh, which is connected with this, then there will be possibility that the iron that is the boiler material will lose its electron, it will uh, it itself will uh, get oxidized and there may be corrosion taking place. So we have to take care that the, if there is any impurity uh, or in case of boiler fittings we can take care. Of course in case of impurities we cannot take care much but in case of boiler fittings we can take care that the metal that should be connected to the boiler material should be more active as compared with that of iron. Or else we can say that that other metal, the second metal to which it is connected, that should easily lose electron or undergo oxidation so that the boiler material will be saved. Thank you, that's all for today.